Hi guys, this video may be a long one, so get yourself something to drink and sit down and get a bit cosy. So if you've been on my channel a while, you will know that in March, I was one of seven creators who collaborated together in the hashtag SpringRound22, where, where we brought a video to you guys every single day. We took it in turns and that video... Um, showed you how to create a piece of ephemera inspired by a prompt. My videos will be linked down below my playlist. I will also link all the other amazingly talented creators down below. So what I decided was I wanted to create um, or have a go at creating all the pieces of ephemera that all the other amazing creators made for the challenge not just my own um, and this journal was my design team project for um, March for release the crafting I will link the flip through video of this if you haven't already seen it I created it using her Ostara digital kit and as release the crafting and Pink Oddbird were hosting and creating the spring around challenge it just seemed perfect to use a journal that I've made with her spring kit in March to then put all my pieces of the March ephemera challenge in. I hope that makes sense. So there's going to be quite a lot to look at. This journal hasn't just got those pieces in it. it I've also put other little bits in it that um, are meaningful to me and work with the colour scheme. So I won't be talking about the digital kit itself or any of those. And I've removed quite a bit of the ephemera now because this journal got junky. <laughs> As a lot of my journals do. But please check out the flip through that um, I made of this journal that just had the release the crafting pieces in it if you're interested and haven't seen it so let's get started this 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 journal is ridiculously chunky which is why i had to remove um some of the pieces of ephemera <laughs> from the kit because it's just ridiculous so let's get started so this tassel was not made by myself when I first started buying journals which may be about four almost five years ago now probably four years ago now um one of the first people I bought from on Etsy was a lovely lady um and I bought quite a few of her journals because I just love the style and she ended up sending me some lovely little goodies as a thank you and just because she was such a sweet woman and she sent me quite a few of these tassels she sent me lots of bits but she did send me quite a few of these tassels and I haven't used them yet on anything and this just works perfectly with the colours and this trim that reminds me of bunny tails and I wanted to put this on here as a reminder of her um, because if you guys don't know I might have mentioned it briefly at some point, but um, I first got into journals. I, a crafty friend of mine had been making them for a while and she kept saying, you will love junk journals. And I was like, I don't really see the point in them. And then uh, around about four and a half years ago, I came across some health challenges and they actually triggered uh, quite a severe anxiety disorder which I now live with daily um, and it is a struggle but you know there we go and I found working in journals like writing in them really good for my mental health and stuff um, and then that inspired me to want to make my own for other people to use so anyway it was that's an important reminder of my sort of journey how I got into them this trim here was gifted to me by my friend Sarah there's quite a few bits in here um, so yeah, let's get started. So in this front pocket, making sure we're in camera, I'm having to stand for this because this video, this journal is too chunky. In this front pocket, I'm going to keep the schedule, the upload schedule. You can see I was on Thursdays and I'm going to keep the prompt list. Also in the front of this journal was this little piece here. Again, I will leave the video, the link to the video down below. So a few years ago, um, this used to be called the Spring Hop and there were a handful of creators and we all uploaded on the same day and you could hop from one channel to the other. So we only made one video each and uh, I were, took part in one of those before the world turned upside down. And this is what I actually made for that challenge. It's the last one I have left. 
so I will leave the video and I just wanted to put it in here as a reminder um, so I don't put it in any other journal I just wanted to keep one for myself like I said it's the last one I have left that I, I think I might have even made that one on camera so I wanted to keep that one so let's get started like I said I'm not going to discuss the kit because there's no need there's a video doing that so day one was April from Pink Oddbird and her prompt was Bloom and she'd been inspired by something she'd seen I think on Pinterest and I just love this idea April oh and in case I didn't say when we um, won the points of this ephemera challenge was to get everyone to use up their scraps or to use things that have been in their craft stash for a while that they might not have used um so a lot of what i've made and all the other creators was just using scraps so april saw this on pinterest i think it's a little heart that you cut out but look it opens up guys and that's why she picked it for bloom because it can be a flower isn't that cute i i love it and then i used a bit of scrap ink um index card that I had and some scrap um embossed cards stitched a little bit and then I used the Tim Holtz clippets that says our creative journey because this was this was day one it was the start of our creative journey for March um I've written the back the day the prompt and the person on the back of every piece so I just remember Obviously, I've got the schedule as well on the prompt list, but it's just all so easy. So that goes in. <laughs> that goes in the pocket. Sorry, this is really awkward. Try to do a video standing. So there's that piece. Oh, one of the creators taking part was is um, Kim from Serene Bookworks. And a few years ago, we'd swapped something, and this was one of the things that she'd given me she gave me quite a few lovely pieces and this one just works so perfectly because it's spring like and it's got the bunny and I just wanted to add that in here because she was also taking part in this and again so I don't use it so that I keep something and remember those memories this was day two and this was Laurie from Terrific Tomes and her prompt was sunshine so she embellished a CD sleeve such a good idea loved how she did it and the card inside I didn't have a cd sleeve so I made my own cd sleeve from a rectangular envelope which I am super proud of myself for doing I even stitched acetate is that showing up so that it has a window love this obviously hers was a lot of blue beautiful blues and celestial but I did mine spring themed because it's a spring journal and that's the inside card she'd use texture paste and watercolors I believed I just used different inks and I used one of my stickers from that great apothecary sticker book that I picked up I loved this one because the sun's got a little flower crown which is very spring like to me and it's all my it's also magnetized there so that I can just attach it over this page it's got a vintage book page as well and it clips on there this scrapbook paper that I've used is from Kane Company so when I first really seriously got into crafting um, not just the odd bit here and there was quite a few quite a few years ago now and one of the first things that I started making was cards and then I moved on to scrapbooking and one of the first scrapbooks I ever made was for my daughter and it was documenting years zero to five. And I bought a Can Company scrapbook kit and it had all the papers. And this is also, I think, the cover of the actual scrapbook. And this one, the few pieces of paper I had left and I've been hoarding it. So I thought it was perfect as I'm keeping this journal for myself to put it in here as a reminder, not only of my scrapbooking, but my first scrapbook and um, my daughter. And then in here we have this little egg. Again, a few years ago, a friend of mine and I did um, a spooky pastel Ostara spring swap. And she made me this beautiful um, embroidery hoop that had been adapted. And it had lots of goodies in there, including lots of these little eggs. And this is from Anna, who is Craft Goat on Instagram. And this is so Anna um, just the pastels and the spookiness and I love it and again rather than it sitting in my box just not doing much I wanted to put it in here as a reminder of Anna I've used a lot of my hand dyed papers in here because again that's a memory and sari silk 
nothing on that page okay in here first thing we have day three of the spring around which was me and my prompt was tulips and i'm not going to get all this out because you know my video is there if you want to check that out so that's in there and then this is again another memory so these are digital spring cards from gypsy rose papery and the reason this is in here is because when I first got into making journals, because I particularly like gothic or witch journals, most people don't make those. And two of the people who I found that really got me involved and really inspired me to start making my own were Dolly at Gypsy Rose Papery and April at Pink Oddbird. And then through both of them, I found everyone else, including Priscilla at Release the Crafting. And I can't believe I'm now on her design team. I mean, these are people that I watched and was totally inspired by and um, loved their work. And now these are people that I'm lucky enough to be working alongside. And I still can't believe how lucky and blessed I am. And so I wanted to put this in here. I know Dolly doesn't do a lot of journals at the moment. Um, but I wanted to put this in here as a reminder of her and how she's inspired me and in my work. This is an Ostara card. There's a lady in a group that I'm in and um, for one whole year she sent everyone in that group um, a handmade card for each of the eight Sabbaths of the eight Wheel of the Year. So this is the perfect place to put the Ostara card from her. So thank you. I know you sometimes watch my videos. So thank you. I love it. And it's just so perfect. And I did it as a flip so I could see this and write it underneath. Um, it's just beautiful. So I did try and put the ephemera in order to begin with. And then very quickly by this page. It kind of went out of order, but there you go. I had to put them where they worked in the journal, so the order wasn't going to work. So this is actually day 11, and this is Kim from Serene Bookworks, and her prompt was pastel. And I love this. This is one of my favourite pieces that anyone's made um, in the spring round, because I love gnomes. Any of you who've watched me for a while know this. I adore gnomes. And she was inspired by the shape of a carrot, though mine doesn't really look like a carrot. And she made this cute gnome embellishment, and I used multicoloured yarn, and I'm hoping you can see, but I actually plaited some of his beard too, and I added a moustache. I know that was uh, something she said would be a good idea, and I thought, yeah, that just works perfectly with the shape that I've done a little flower and I stuck him right down and I've written under there who inspired it and I just I love it Kim I really do it's such a good idea it really was okay oh and this is day six now again this is one of my favorite pieces I love everything everyone made but there's a few pieces that I just thought oh, they are perfect they are I wish I'd thought of those and this is one of those pieces. So this is from Shana by SB Artistry. This day six, like I said. And um, this is a leaf, fabric leaf embellishment. It's got like metallic green lace on top. And I've hand stitched with the vintage thre thread that my friend Sarah sent me. Um, there's some hand stitching. I don't know if it's on here, actually. This might be machine stitching. Then this is from an old necklace of mine and this earring. So I bought these wooden earrings. The beads are green, but they're a bit um, um, lost some of the colour. They're darker than they were and they're wood. And I had these earrings as a teenager. And when I was pregnant with my first child, I wore these, teen, um, these earrings all the time. So they hold special memory for me, but it's just not something I wear anymore, this style. So I'd taken them apart and it just seemed perfect to add it into here. Again, a memory and the sleeve trim. Well, I've already made a lot, Shana. <laughs> so if there's another example in here. I love it. It's perfect. So this is day, where are we? It says on the back, day 12. And this is Cindy from Studio Lou, and she made a shaker card. And I followed, it does shake, like the eggs do move. The eggs do move. But I followed her example. I even put the rabbit, she'd use the rabbit, because she actually created this shaker card as a 3D shaker, and it was the cover to her March design team project for Release the Craft In. And I loved it. So I tried to copy it as much as possible, but I had no room to make it 
3D because I knew it was going in this journal. But I used the rabbit, she used a rabbit. I've added die cuts, she used something else. I think she used a bird. I had some of this yarn similar to hers that had been hand dyed and gifted to me and I've got several of it and it was a great way to use it. And then like um, Cindy did, I hope that's picking up, but the eggs actually have holographic um, embossing powder on. And again, I haven't used my holographic embossing powder in a while. And it just says spring, a lovely reminder of how beautiful change can be. I've made it into a journaling card. Like I said, hers was a cover. Go check that video out if you haven't seen it because it's just brilliant. I just didn't have the room to make it 3D. I wish I had. So this was actually supposed to be, so this was a prototype of my own. So for my prompt umbrellas, I was playing around with how I wanted that journaling card to look. So this was the prototype. I'd used different types of inks and things. And so I'm wanting to put that in here because I don't think I'll use it in another journal. And it's just a nice place to keep it. And then this was an actual um, die cut I brought specifically this year for spring. And I loved it. So I wanted to add that. And again, it's a memory. Then on this page, oh, again, I love this. Shana just like because she worked with fabric in quite a few of her prompts and fabric is something I love to work with um I just fell in love <laughs> with hers and this was day 13 so this is Shana SB artistry and her prompt was kite and I mean how perfect it's made out of fabric um front and back it's so much easier than I thought it was going to be when I saw her do it I thought oh like that looks amazing it's probably going to be complicated and it really wasn't this was my first attempt she also made one out of card um, which is also a great idea and I've added bells onto mine because I like now noise it's floating so I've got it in here with a bulb pin it'd be a perfect um bookmark to work go through your journal but I've just attached it so it doesn't get lost and attached to the bulb pin is a little butterfly charm, but also this little tiny mini book. These, uh, my friend Sarah makes these and this might be one of hers. She made them as earrings as well as other things. She does different sizes. You can write and actually journal in there. And she gifted me quite a few. So I wanted to put one in this journal. So one, I don't use them because I use them quite a lot and I didn't want to kind of use them all up, even though Sarah could give more, but um yeah I wanted to put it in here again as a memory so that's there so inside the envelope in the middle of the signature is another handmade card from the same lovely person who made the Ostara card this was another card she'd made um I don't know if it was the same year because obviously she'd already done the Ostara one or whether it was the year before I'm not sure, but that's in there again. This here, if you've seen my video where I did the crazy craft challenge, took part in that earlier in the year, um, this was one of the embellishments I made blind. And I literally haven't done anything except rip a bit off. I've kept it exactly how it is because, again, I wanted to document that challenge and use one of the pieces that I created and I was so impressed with this because even though I created this completely blindfolded and it still looks nice, I actually got the cross where the um, the staples and I did that blindfolded. So I wanted to put that in there again as a memory. I will be journaling in this book. Um, obviously, I want to share it before I start putting stuff in. So again, day six, Shana SB Artistry. This is another variation on the um leaf her green prompt i love it i've used all sorts of laces this one is hand stitched with the vintage thread the beautiful vintage thread that i'm using in everything that i was gifted by my friend sarah i absolutely love how this looks which is why i've made so many more and this beautiful piece so this was day 14 it is Priscilla from Release the Craft In. The prompt was a blue sky. And I love this technique. I've not done this before. So Priscilla basically used watercolours on tracing paper. And I'm hoping it picks up a little bit. But these are my shimmery watercolours. Um, they're really, really beautiful. They're cheap watercolours, but they're just the colour, the shimmer on them is beautiful. 
So I copied her technique even down to the circular bubble clouds, though I think her clouds turned out better. Um, and I stitched around mine because, as we all know, I like to stitch. <laughs> Use some embellishments. This was on a card. So again, as I was going through some memory boxes and that of mine, I was getting rid of quite a lot of bits and pieces. But I kept some of the cards fronts that I didn't need to keep the whole card but I wanted to keep the front because it's cute and this little bear worked perfectly so it was off one of those cards and it's got little daisy chains everywhere and it's just so cute and works brilliantly on here like I said some um, die cuts one of these die, die cuts is turned the other way because this colour worked better I love I love the feel of it. I love the book page underneath and the stamping. And then I've stenciled on the back. So that was day 14. Okay. Oh, and this little piece. So I'm going to have to get this up to the camera. Hold on. So hopefully that focuses. So this little wooden bead um, was actually hand painted by my friend Sarah she is so good at miniature pieces and I have several pieces of her hand painted jewellery like bracelets and a pair of ghost earrings that glow in the dark um, and this little piece was gifted to me recently in her giant box of happy mail and again it worked perfectly and I just wanted to use it in here as just a reminder of her so this is a cross piece bit that I did a few years ago I love to cross stitch I'm not doing it as much as I used to it was my main craft um, for quite a while and I just love this it's super cute but again where am I going to use it it's not really my style um, so it worked perfectly in here and then in that pocket is this and this is day 16 and this is by Laurie from Terrific Tomes and her prompt was showers. Now, this was the funny bit because my prompt for umbrella and her prompt for showers, we did something extremely similar and we hadn't even discussed it. We both used um, paper that we then used texture paste on. Um, I think she used watercolours. I used my watercolours again. I hope that's picking up. I used my shimmery ones. So this background I already had when I came to make this tag because I had one left over from playing around with what I was making for my prompt. And on the edge here is um, blue embossing powder, but I mixed it with some holographic. So you can just pick up the sparkles in there, which is really cute. And she had used something of Graphic 45 to decorate her tag, which inspired me to get some of my random Graphic 45 pieces out. And when I saw this, I was like, oh my gosh, that is perfect. Not only does it have an umbrella, but it just reminds me of Laurie because your sweet little dog is always in the background of your video somehow. And I just saw this and I was like, oh my gosh, that's Laurie. That's, that really reminds me of you. And... um. I had to put it on there. I just had to make this. It's your prompt. It's the piece of ephemera you made. And it just reminds me of you. And then I added some gems. Just to add a bit of sparkle like raindrops. And it just says spring showers. I've stitched around it and backed it. But I haven't put a tab on it for once. Which is unusual for me. But I thought it looked beautiful as it is. So there you are Laurie. You're in my journal forever. So oh my gosh. This was so good. Um, So this is day four the prompt was butterfly and the creator was kim from serene bookworks and she was inspired to do an infinity card because she liked the idea that like a butterfly it opens up which i just think's genius kim i would never have thought that way and when i watched kim's video i was just like i'm never going to be able to do that there's too many measurements i don't like maths i don't like measurements there's just too many it's going to be too complicated and it really wasn't, guys. It was actually really simple. Um, I did it slightly differently to how Kim did it because I used thin paper and I didn't um, put as many layers. 
but I love how this turned out. I got to use um, dies, I got to use some stickers, I got to use some papers that I really love, and I got to use some of my butterflies. So here we go, guys. So it opens up, and then it opens up again, and then it opens up, and I've left these two blank at the back so that they can be written on, and I've used some of my dies here, and then it opens up again. I'm just, it's so tactile. It's just such a great idea. I just, the problem is I made it slightly too big for the journal. Um, so it sticks out a little bit, which means it's getting a bit damaged on the edge, which is a bit sad, but I'll try and sort that out. And this is day 10 and it was my prompt and my prompt was umbrella. And so again, I made this on camera. You can have a look at my video if you're interested. But as you can see, I did something similar to um, what Laurie had done and we hadn't even <laughs> as I said we hadn't even spoken about what we were doing and then we ended up doing something so similar and that happens a few times and it's funny but also pretty nice you know anyway so then we're on to day eight and this is April Pink Oddbird and her prompt was basket so she did some paper weaving and I have not done this in forever and can I just say I actually found this really therapeutic and I got to use up my scraps, which was great because that's the whole point. These are all using scraps. And then what I love was because April stitched across the lines to keep them in place on the other side, it looks like lines you can write on. And again, I think that's such a genius idea. Um, I just really love it. It's simple and yet so effective and gives that added texture. And um, yeah. I've already been doing some more basket weaving and it fits perfectly in this vellum pocket I created and just looks so beautiful. Um, okay, guys, so this, this piece here is one of the very first journal cards I ever made about four years ago from a book page. I mean, I wasn't even gluing right to the edge. The stitching, which is the straight line, was extremely dodgy because I had a very um, cheap and basic sewing machine back then because I literally only bought a sewing machine to make paper journals with. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, it's just really basic, but I wanted to put it in here as an example of how far I've kind of come on one of my early pieces. I don't have many of these left anymore. Um, it's a bit rough and ready to put in a journal and then I added an embellishment to the front and another one of those adorable eggs from the spooky pastel that my friend Anna had gifted me so that goes in there as a memory oh and this is just such a great idea I hope like I'm going to try and bring this up to the camera a little bit so this was day hold on hold on hold on it will say on the side Day seven, release the craft in, and her prompt was Bunny, I believe. Yes. So she made this cute paper sack, which I think is brilliant because I've, like many of us, probably got a lot of sacks. And um, I went all out. I mean, let me bring it up again. I, I went all out. I added, I'm trying to hold this, it's very difficult. I added a lot of bunnies. I did a lot of embossing in pinks and purples, um, some Tim Holtz, lots of little bunnies here. There's textured embossing there, um, the little fairy. So this fairy again was gifted to me by my friend Sarah. So I cut it out of a card that she'd sent. And I tried the technique that Priscilla had said about if you hold the heat gun really close to a distress embossing powder which is what this is it kind of moves the embossing powder and you get a mottled effect never tried that before love how it looks and i also really love the idea of ripping the top off the bag and then attaching it to um, the bottom flap to give you more space and then i had this little ribbon that says on the move and it just looked perfect because it looks like all the bunnies and the fairy are on the move and looking and then a little flower can just stick in there. So I love that. And then inside that is day nine. Again, Laurie. Her prompt was garden. And this one, the tags. Laurie did a much better example of this. This didn't quite go to plan. Um, but I still really like how it turned out. I added some splatter. She added lots of different textures. Um, 
and there's the back that you can write on with some of my sort of painted papers and so yeah day nine lorry prompt garden as i said you really should if you haven't already check out people's videos they are brilliant so this is day 15 and this is april pink oddbird so um this is the most difficult piece that i've made in all these pieces <laughs> And it has nothing to do with April's video or tutorial because that was perfect. <laughs> it was me. I just somehow, no matter how many times I watched it, my brain would not take in how April was kind of twisting the fabric to give it the petal effect. Um, and I don't know why. I just couldn't take it. And her tutorial was perfect and easy to follow. And I just couldn't grab it. And the first one I made was this, which, as you can see, <laughs> this was a disaster. And then when I re-watched the video, I realised what I was doing wrong was I had all the same colour for the layers and it's meant to be two and two. And anyway, this is a prototype. So just to show you that, you know, we can all make mistakes. It doesn't matter. These things happen. I turned mine into a paper clip and I think it's super cute and I will definitely be making some gothic ones for my gothic journals. And then inside here is one of the first embellishments I ever made. And again, it's a bit rough and ready, but this is my style has said similar, though I've got better at making them because this is um, vintage book page. There's fabric, there's music paper, there's stitching. And again, I just wanted to add it as a way to remember sort of where I started out and how I'm making things now. And then final piece for this signature is day five and it's Cindy at Studio Lou and her prompt was seedling and she made this fun uh, mixed media card. She had some texture paste, um, brand new one that she wanted to try out and I didn't have that. So I literally used some of my normal texture paste added brown paint to it put it on so it had this lovely um these lines then went over them with um my ink black ink pad just to bring out the texture went through my butterfly books this one's up on some foam and then found out these butterflies like violets so i went through both um, a flower book that I had and some Edith Holden it actually said violets in the background got the little caterpillar on there that just like she did and the chrysalis I didn't have a seed to put here but I did have the root and again it's just worked so well I added a bit of fabric up there and I just love the idea love the texture it would work perfectly in a nature journal so now we are on to the second signature hold on I just need to take my cardigan off it's getting super hot so this one is day 25 and it's Kim from Serene Bookworks and her prompt was bees and I loved what she came up with. She used these hexagons uh, die cut pieces that she'd been gifted but she did say if you don't have any which I don't and I don't have a hexagon die to cut pieces out you know she said use a square and trim it. And that's what I did. I thought, go for it. That's what we're going to do. And I used the scraps of paper from that I still had left from the bee journal. I made a few years uh, last year, I believe. And this bee, a couple of years ago, um, I had brought a pack of these. So I don't have this die. And I love these bees. This was my final one. And I decided to use it for myself in my journal. Um, because we deserve to have these pieces we love too, guys. <laughs> and these were all scraps these I'd been gifted um that was a scrap of something else and then I had this so all of this was made from scraps or little tiny pieces like this that um was the last that I had I love how this turned out I didn't do it in the bright spring colors that a lot of the other pieces are in but I just love it and I love this hexagon idea and it's such a good idea Kim um and I just liked actually making my own hexagons. They're not perfect, but well, that doesn't matter. So this one here is day, day 17 and it's me and it's grass. 
So that was my embellishment. Again, there's a video down below and I've turned it into a tuck spot. And then this one is day 26 and it's Cindy from Studio Lou again and her prompt was petals. And she came up with a fantastic way to use some of those envelopes that we have come through that, you know, instead of throwing them away. So she used the internal bubble wrap bit and painted it for the center and then she used the envelope itself to make petals she had um, um a punch a petal punch i didn't have one i had to draw a template and then cut these all out myself um which <laughs> was <laughs> um took longer but again it's using what you have i don't have a punch i'm not going to buy a petal punch i'm going to cut them out and do it um and it still works perfectly. I used one of my uh, dyed pages that I have that I just um, put my spare ink onto for collage fodder, used some fabric and then stitched around as she did. And she was gonna use hers as a pocket, but she did turn one into a journaling tag, which I um, card, which I thought was perfect. So I did that too with some hand dyed paper. I just love how these turned out, Cindy. They're such a good way of recycling something that would normally get thrown away and again i made lots of extra pieces so i'll be making more of these and they just look so good uh da, 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 nothing there nothing there nothing there so this is fun because this is actually two pieces by two different creators and again they hadn't spoken about what they were making and yet they both worked perfectly so Day 18, Kim at Serene Bookworks, her prompt was duck. Mine looks more like a chick, but I used the paper that I had. Um, and she made this cute little journaling space that's a duck tuck. Sorry, I'm throwing it away. It's flying away. It's trying to get away from me. And I used some netting to give it some hair <laughs> and um, a little scrap of handmade paper for its beak. This is so cute. So Kim had also made, so this was her main piece and then she made like a little piece that you could tuck it into in a journal. However, day 19, Cindy at Studio Lou had made um, an egg journaling card that you could open. So I made mine patchwork because I wanted to use up lots of the scraps of the paper that I had left over from making lots of pieces of ephemera. So I made mine patchwork and it opens up, it's got vintage music paper. It would make a perfect journaling card if you wanted to. But I made mine a little big. So it just got stuck in. And she put a little die cut chick in hers. Not die cut, um, cut out of a magazine or something. But I thought that's the perfect place to put my little duck tuck. So I put my duck from day 18 in my egg from day 19. And they work so perfectly together. And I just love it so interactive such a great idea guys so many talented creators obviously so this was mine and this was day 24 and my prompt was hope and again there's a video for how i made this tag and why i chose that for my design for hope and then this is day 20 and it's shana for sb artistry she was using um tags that you've got left over from buying products um and also using up some of her maggie holmes because i'm just as bad i love maggie holmes design i love the brightness of the colors and images but i just don't use it i used to use it a lot when i made pocket letters but i just don't use it in journals and this is a great way to use those up and some of those little gems there's some gold wire behind here and some vellum and some sparkle she made um yeah because her prompt was pop bright she made a brilliant tag out of uh, its three-dimensional shaker out of a packet that she got some gilding wax in and now I want to buy that gilding wax just to get that packet to make that shaker card because that's how much I love it but I didn't have that and this is about using scraps so this is a Tim Holtz um, card packaging piece that I used for this tag and used up lots of scraps that I have and it's just so much fun and then on the other side this is day 22 it is April pink odd bird and her prompt was earth and she made this great cut out tag 
and literally I know this is a bit rough but that's the way it's meant to be I used scraps I had some water scraps in my scrap box I had these pieces left over the scrap scrapbook paper and some bits of die cuts that I'd cut down I stitched around it it moves I just love that movement of it so I did both sides and then I actually um use scraps on the back as well so this could be written on um I'm not sure can't remember if April did that or not but that's a really good idea and I just again love the dimension of that and the interactivity so this little piece um I found some organic vegan chocolates by a company I think they're called Bouja Bouja and I found their Easter truffle box and I've never tried this vegan chocolate company before and um they are amazing guys I mean they had hazelnuts in there they had stem ginger they had vanilla and rhubarb which I've just not seen it oh my gosh I've shared them with everyone I, I bought extra boxes because you know I wasn't sharing <laughs> if I just had one box and everyone who's eaten them has said I can't even believe they're vegan they're so creamy and rich and beautiful but the box had this beautiful metallic um rabbit on there and i loved it so much so i've made it into a pocket in here to remember that that was the easter edition oh my gosh they go so good guys so good mm, yes but anyway move on from there okay so this was the final piece made this is day 31 it is priscilla from reese crafting and can i just say hold on i'm just getting my little pot to hold the Jenna. can i just say priscilla this is one of my favorite pieces and i think it's because it really speaks to the inner child in me and when i saw you create it i thought oh my gosh i don't know if i've got a window that i can do that with and in my head i was thinking do i have to make a window do i have to, i know i've got a window die cut but it's really small can i make it work and then i was going through some magazines on the off chance and i have this old watercolor magazine and it had this in it which was perfect so I've been talking about it a lot like I said her prompt was renew but watch guys watch oh, I just it is adorable I love the idea I mean it really does speak to the child of me it's like a little hidden jigsaw piece it's there and you can't see that it's there and then you open it up and ta-da and I, because of the way I cut this and everything, so it's a bit too short. So if I pull it all the way up so you don't see the window, you see that bit. So if I have it that way, it doesn't really matter because the window blends a little bit. And again, this is one of the bunnies from one of the journaling carts by Gypsy Rose Papery. So I wanted to use it. I had a little sticker. Look at it. This bunny is super cute. It's got its egg. It's got its flowers. It's got a little bow on. It's looking for a snazzy. Perfect for a stara. And then I stamped out Renew as Priscilla did. And I used my peach embossing powder, which I don't think I've ever used in the six years that I've had it. I just, I love it. I love it so much. I just keep doing that. It's so cute. Hello. Goodbye. Hello. Anyway. <clears throat> anyway. You can take this whole card out. Journal on the back. I stenciled and put a little bunny sticker. It's very cute with its glasses. Um, and then underneath, I just says, uh, put some Tim Holtz stickers that say, here comes Peter Cottontail hopping down the bunny trail with chocolate eggs. And I've inked around them in blue. And then the journaling card goes back in. I didn't have one of the cards that Priscilla used for the back, but I wanted the effect that she had here so my old watercolor pad i'd actually kept the cardboard cover um so this is like really sturdy and it had these pieces and then i've inked them i love it it's again one of my favorite pieces it's so clever i know she was inspired by something she saw but it was so clever and it's so much fun and it's just so perfect and i love it it's one of my favorite pieces so okay so that's the middle uh, this was a piece I was gifted by someone who I used to swap a lot of pocket letters with. I've actually trimmed it. It's so long. And I've kept it for years because it's just so bright and cute and glittery. But I wasn't going to use it in anything. And it works perfectly in here. And again, it would work as a bookmark. 
so that's really good oh and this piece so i'm trying to get it so it's not i'm trying to look in the camera i'm trying to get it so that it's not glaring but this is a day hold on 29 it's april from pink oddbird and her prompt was grow again i love this idea april so i've she made a card where the inside really trying to see if you can see it i don't want to glare it. i put acetate in mine she didn't put acetate in hers but i like the acetate and i used an old sprint the cover of an old spring equinox card that i have and that pops out and then i've used something from an old calendar that i had that this is spring dancing and it says live every day with intention and i just Again, I've stuck it down as a pocket so you can put something in between. You could have it as a floating journaling card. I stenciled, I got to use these flowers that were in my stash and I just love how those bunnies look in there. They look really good and this ribbon was gifted with um, an order. Like one of my orders was wrapped in it that I brought. It just looks so good and I really like I me. Mean, seriously guys. Everyone came up with some, some amazing ideas. So this one is Shayna from SB Artistry. Her prompt was seedling, I believe. Seeds, and this is day 27. I've done a very rough copy. Go and check out Shayna's video. This is perfect to gift people in your life um, as a Mother's Day gift, uh, just for friends, happy mail. So she used a window envelope, partially embossed it, used some scraps. So I've gone all out using whatever scraps I had. There's the back with this 3D um, golden butterfly, lots of scraps and embossing. And inside is basically to send seeds to your friend. So I chose chamomile. This was actually from um, a book about chamomile flowers uh, from a vintage book. And on the back, you put what type of flowers you're sending, um, planting season, if they like the sun or not, depth that you plant them to, spacing, height, whatever information for that other person to grow those flowers. And then inside, you also include a packet of seeds of those. I mean, it's such a clever idea. I don't class myself a gardener, but I do garden. I do have fruit trees and lots of flowers and, you know, grow lots of vegetables and things. But, you know... Um, and this is such a perfect idea to gift someone and I love it and I've got to use another window envelope I've got to use several of those guys during this which is brilliant um, yeah, so Shana day 29 I'm trying to look so there's three on this page so let's get it all so the first one is this tiny journaling spot and it's day 21 by priscilla from uh, release the craft in so many fun pieces that just made me feel like i was a kid i loved it um and this her prompt was ladybug or as we in the uk say ladybird and this opens up and you can journal in it look at that guys <laughs> so it's all scraps i used um a bit of scrap card that had inking this inking was already on it and then i used that inside too scrap book paper this was a birthday card cover so i used that as the wings it's just so much fun so that is day 21 doesn't it look cute and then just poking out and then this is day 30 and this again is laurie from terrific tombs her prompt was life and she gave life to an old envelope that she embellished and this envelope had been sent to me a few years ago by um, someone a friend who lives in Sicily so I kept that part of the address and I'd ripped the stamp stamp off to use in a collage for my Marguerite Miller so there was a big gaping hole here but I wanted to use the envelope and by adding the inside liner just like Laurie did this is actually from a magazine an image from a magazine and collage in the front like this I've been able to use up that envelope and still keep it and remember my friend in Sicily, use stickers, scrapbook scraps, bits from magazines, stenciling, um, a sticker here that actually holds it, the flap shut. Oh gosh, like, <laughs> come on, like that. 
<laughs> once I get it down. A bit I put a bit on the back so you can also um, write on there, a little bunny sticker with flowers. And then inside that I have put this piece, which again is by Priscilla. Um, it's day 28. I mean, seriously, Priscilla, you just made such fun pieces. It was just, yeah, just so many fun pieces. And again, she used like a card that was from an ad for sticker advent book or something. So I pulled a bit out of my ephemera that is a pre-printed card I'd been sent in something. I'm not going to use this in my journals because it's not my style, but it worked perfectly for this. And then used some scraps that I had. And then it opens up and look, guys, it's a daisy chain because her prompt was daisy. I mean, mine's pink, but you know whatever that's the paper i had it is a pink daisy jay look at it <laughs> it's so much fun i stenciled put a little bunny i used my watercolor shimmery watercolor paints and some white gel pen i didn't do it quite white right because it pops out the edge like that which is my fault not her tutorial um but it fits okay when it's in like that and again i just love it it just fitted so well so again yeah that was day 28 guys and then the final two pieces in this journal. So this is the final piece from the Spring Around Ephemera. And this is day 23. It's Laurie from Terrific Tombs. And her prompt was birds. Again, I got to use up a window envelope. I think she had something else, but the window envelope worked perfectly. It's got some mixed media and inking and some scrapbook. And this is a Tim Holtz embellishment. And then this pops out. It's a little envelope. I've found this nest and put some eggs in it from a book that i had put some words that say spring chicks and then it's a little journaling card again with some tim holtz these are all scraps guys look this is all just scraps that i had and then it just fits in there and again it's such a great idea not only does it go well in a pocket but you could so let's get a page up use it as a belly band like that it's just such a great idea it really is. And it's using um, those number cards. I had a small one. Hers was bigger, but it works so well. And then this final piece, guys. So before I took part in the spring hop a few years ago, um, they did it the year before for a few years before. And I used to watch it and try and make pieces from it. So I can't believe that I used to follow this and now I'm part of it. It's like crazy and one of the people who used to take part was um Lip lipstick legion craft who is an amazing crafter and she doesn't do a lot of these anymore but she does so many great things on her channel so i will leave it down below because you really should check out what she makes and this is one of my favorite things that has ever ever been made in any of the spring hops that i've ever watched or taken part in and it's these great carrot tags um i made three when um i watched her and these are the other two that i've made they've lasted quite well considering how many years ago that i made these but i decided to put one in here because i've been hoarding these <laughs> i decided to put one in here so i can finally use these ones up and the reason i chose the one that says thankful is just because and the reason it's right at the back of the journal is just because that's how i feel i feel very thankful to have found this community to now be part of this community i feel thankful to have been asked to take part in this um event this year and to just know these amazing creators i'm just very grateful feel very blessed so i wanted to put this one in here it's also my favorite out of the three i made and it's just so good idea so i will leave the video to where she made this down below if it's still on her channel i hope it is because i think she also made tomato ones um and they were just such an amazing idea so that is in there too i will have to put everything back and that's it guys that is all the pieces i made inspired by the six other amazingly talented creators who also took part in the spring around ephemera challenge and i know there's lots of people on instagram who took part um inspired by these prompts who sort of journaled alongside us who also did great things but i wanted to make what the other six collaborators have made just as a way for me to remember this event 
to remember these amazing people. And also this now works as an inspiration journal for me with lots of pieces, lots of memories. And it shows how a journal can work as several things. A journal doesn't have to be just one thing. You know, this has memories in it from people that I've known many years, people who've gifted me things, um, my, my own creative journey through journals, bits are in here too. But then you've got all these amazing pieces that were made throughout um, the challenge itself. And it works as an inspiration journal for those two, as well as that memory, all those memories for me. So this is a long video. If you've stayed with me this long, thank you very much. And leave like, if you don't want to leave a comment, just leave an emoji down below. Leave a tulip or um, a spring flower down below for me. Um... And yeah, let me know what you think. Do you like how this has turned out? Did you follow along with the hashtag spring around 22? What is your favourite piece? Have you seen something here that you missed in one of the other creators videos and are now like, I have to go and watch that video immediately and make that piece? <laughs> because, you know, we all get like that. Some of these pieces, I literally watched the video and went straight and made them. <laughs> That's certainly true of the window envelope from, um, that Priscilla made. Um, but yeah, I loved being part of this this year. It really brought a smile to my face. And I just cannot believe how amazingly talented all the six other collaborators were. And the inspiration they got from the prompts. It's always interesting to see how other people interpret prompts. So anyway, thank you very much for having me this year, guys. Um, I loved being part of it. And working like with you all so huh, if you stayed with me this long thank you very much if you have liked this video please give it a thumbs up if you have liked what you've seen and want to see more of this kind of thing but haven't subscribed yet please hit that subscribe button and thank you so much for watching guys wherever you are in the world i hope you are safe and i hope you're having crafty fun and until next time guys see you then bye